Hi, I'm Mike Kovaleski from Design Sleep, and welcome to the Healing Power of Sleep. Thank you for coming, everybody. Okay, so we're at the Convention Center in Cincinnati, and I'm going to present to you why it's important to sleep, and maybe even how to get a little bit more sleep. So, first slide. The Healing Power of Sleep. Peak performance living through better sleep. Take care of yourself so you can be your best, live your best, and do your best. Why do we need sleep? Well, uh, what do we want to do in life? Where do we want to be in life? How do we want to perform in life? I have a lot of responsibility of children, of business, and all these things going on in life. I need to be at my peak performance. So we can crash around 2 o'clock in the afternoon and be ineffective and useless, or we can be your best self. Sleep for your physical health. Your body builds and repairs while we sleep. Sleep also supports healthy growth and development. Children only grow while they sleep, little known fact. Uh, your immune system relies on sleep to stay healthy. These are all physical reasons why we need sleep. Uh, sleep helps maintain healthy balance of hormones, and hormones are what's controlling a lot of things in our body systems. So all these are good reasons physically for us to get sleep. That one's kind of obvious. A little less obvious is your brain. Your brain sleep needs, your brain needs sleep because they used to think that your brain was sort of like parking a car in the garage at night and it was inert, didn't do anything. Now they realize that your brain is working actually more while you sleep than when you're not sleeping. So sleep for your mental health. Sleep helps your brain work properly while you're sleeping. Your brain is preparing for the next day. It's forming new pathways to help you learn and remember information. Next. While we sleep, the brain clears out harmful toxins. We wake up with a clear head, or perhaps all those toxins gives you a little brain fog in the morning, some drinking some water, clearing that out, maybe a cup of coffee. Uh, but our, brain, our brains are actually clearing toxins, getting ourselves renewed. Studies show that sleep enhances learning, problem-solving skills. Sleep also helps you pay attention. Uh, make decisions and be creative. So your mind is really doing a lot. It's not just inactive while you sleep. Next. Yes. Sleep for your emotional health. Turns out that uh, sleep really affects and balances who we are much more than you think. Even moral judgments can be just uh, greatly hindered by lack of sleep or sleep deprivation, which we'll get into. Sleep makes it easier to get along with others. Regular quality sleep is proof as a proven therapy to help those who feel angry, impulsive, have mood swings, feel sad or depressed, or even lack of mo uh, motivation. Um, little children put them to bed. You, everybody gets a little tired, they get a little cranky. It's all actual what's that physiologically happening in your body in terms of uh, the needs for emotional, mental balance. Again, connecting back right to the brain which one, in the hormones we just saw a minute ago. Don't wake up grumpy. Let him or her sleep a little longer. So if you're sleeping with somebody who seems a little grumpy, let them sleep. It could actually help with their emotional health and emotions affect relations. Patience with the kids. Next. The stages of sleep. You've probably heard a lot about the stages of sleep. There's five stages of sleep. Stage two is the longest. Uh, but essentially, light sleep, when you just fall asleep, stage two, your, heart, your whole body starts to slow down. Stage three is where your body is actually getting some repair. Your body is going through a whole bunch of processes in repairing and rebuilding. Uh, muscle only grows when you sleep, and that would be in stage three. Stage four, uh, your body temperature and your blood pressure decreases, slows down. Uh, they also say this is kind of a build, energy building period during the sleep stage. Stage five, which is REM sleep, is where there's a tremendous amount of brain activity, and it is really, really important for memory and learning. As we go through this sleep cycle, we go through it about four or five times a night, each time that REM sleep is getting longer and longer. So people who only get six hours of sleep are not going to perform like people who get eight hours of sleep, because that last REM sleep in the seventh hour is going to be much, much more impacting on their brain. Good tip for students. Next. But I can't sleep. Okay, so some experts, uh, we are say we're averaging 6.1 hours a night in the United States, uh, and there's people depending on what they're selling and what they're doing and different factors. But we see that a lot prevalent in uh, the media. 
according to the internet, it's true, uh, 6.1 hours. Compare that to eight hours a night before we had light bulbs. The average person in America was sleeping more than eight hours. How much is that affecting our health? That's the next question, but we'll get into that. But the point is we're sleeping less. Uh, what makes us not sleep? Anxiety, fear, uh, stress, uh, bills, headaches, no time, just the, 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 the running around in life can just wear us out and we're not fully relaxed, not fully resting the way we ought to. Uh, some experts are even saying try nine hours of sleep, meaning go to bed an hour early and give yourself that extra time just to unwind so that you can get your deeper sleep. How much sleep do I really need? Well, I just told you that six to eight, eight hours, there's differences there. Uh, uh, seven to nine are what the experts are saying. And of course, everybody's gonna say, well, I need a seven, you know, uh, but the truth is that seven to nine is what, what it is, obviously the average being eight. Um, we, we see that it actually varies by age group. Babies need 12 to 18 hours. I've proven that's not true. We have six children. My last child only needed two hours a night when she was a newborn. I don't know what it was, a freak a mystery, but it defies what it said there. Um, as we age, we, we are actually needing a little less sleep. Really important to notice that, that 18 to 12, uh, 12 to 18 years old do need eight and a half to nine hours. It's not seven. Most teenagers are sleeping a lot less than that. During the summer, they might sleep 12 hours a day, uh, we, uh, but during the, during the school year, they might be down to five. So that greatly affects a whole bunch of stuff, which we're going to go into. Oh, the great American sleep deficit. True story. Uh, there's a lot of people, over 50% of Americans carry a sleep debt, which means over time, if I need eight hours a night and I'm getting seven, after, a, after eight years of doing that, you're missing an entire year of sleep. So it's a lot more drastic than you think, and you can't just sleep right in one day and, and pay all that back. It takes a lot of time to do that. There's some obvious ones, there's some uh, not so obvious ones. Increased uh, heart rate, risk of heart disease, a paired immune system, a risk of diabetes, other things, growth suspension, obesity, decrease in temperature, like temperature issues. A lot of these things are affected. What's not so obvious is this, the irritability, we talked about cognitive impairment, we don't make good judgments, and actually impaired moral adjustments. There's a lot of studies that talk about people's morality being changed by the amount of sleep you get. If you're really tired, that's eh, close enough. You might not be as significantly conscientious when you're a little overtired. So it really affects moral judgment. And again, if we're dealing with a, an American deficit and there's a lot of people exhausted out there, there is going to be a lot more impaired moral judgment in the culture we're seeing. So it could be connected. Hey, sleep impacts health. So if you're getting poor sleep, it's going to affect all these things. It's going to affect actually even mortality. They say that uh, diet, nutrition, and exercise, uh, sleep is in that. It's one-third of your health, and it's actually the greatest, greatest determinant of longevity is quality sleep, even more than diet and exercise. So mortality up there. Uh, immune function, again, that also affects mortality. If your immune system is not really rebuilding itself, it's going to shorten your lifespan. Cancer, mental health, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, all these are affected by poor sleep. Well, it turns out the opposite is true. So as we're struggling with diabetes and heart disease and mental health and cancer, all these sort of uh, ills, it is going to make it harder to sleep. Pain makes it harder to sleep. And so there's a vicious cycle. Go to bed. First thing, let's do this real simple. Why don't you spend more time in bed, go to bed earlier, get to bed earlier is one of the best ways to regain sleep. Um, also, there's this magic between, if you can sleep between seven and nine in the morning, there is a whole pro school of thought that your body is even superb, an extra amount of healing during that time, especially for adrenal fatigue. So that's another helpful tip. Um, but essentially, keep it simple. Go to bed. People are not spending time in bed. They go to bed late, they wake up early. Obvious but true. Uh, hack your sleep. One of the things about it is there is a lot of health issues that can cause poor sleep. One of them and the main one being sleep apnea and it has to do with breathing issues but a lot of these can be tested. There's a whole science behind this where they can really test to see how well you're sleeping. So you can improve the quality of your sleep by doing some of these things. Here's some of the things you can do to change the quality of your sleep. Number one, 
Avoid stress, simplify life. If you have three businesses going, drop it down to one maybe or something. Um, people, all these things. Stress is the killer. Stress, we carry it with us and it's hard to let go. Uh, don't wait till bedtime to start thinking. This is something I tell a lot of people. So we're looking at uh, how stress affects your body, emotions, behavior, and mind. It's also going to affect your sleep, which goes back to body, emotions, behavior, and mind. So they're all interconnected. Finding ways to relax, and whether it's through meditation, prayer, uh, running, and walking, and exercise, all these things we'll get into. But find a way to unwind. Turn off the screens. Not this one. Turn off the screens. Uh, blue light that comes from this is very similar to daylight, and it, uh, it suppresses the, uh, uh, the manufacturing of melatonin. Um, and can keep cortisol, which is your stress hormone, that's going to keep that nice and strong while suppressing your melatonin, which is the, chem the hormone that says it's time to relax and go to bed. So they do a bunch of things. They have, if you're totally addicted, you can buy uh, uh, yellow glasses. They have special glasses. There's screen filters that can go that can change that light a little bit better. Um, but best thing to do is turn it off because if you find out what's going on in Facebook, it might stress you out, keep you up all night. So best thing to do, turn it off. Okay, that, unless you're a dog, dogs can sleep through anything. So if you are a dog, <laughs> screens are okay, all right? <laughs> sleep cool. Uh, temperature issues are a big deal. If you're hot, you're cold, you don't, nothing matters. Uh, temperature issues, one of the key things that we do in our, our business by selling natural mat mattresses, there's a, uh, I, the key factor of climate control. Sleeping on plastic, you'll actually sleep warmer than sleeping on natural materials like cotton and wool. Just think of polyester socks. They make they trap moisture to your feet, and your feet will get a little sweatier. Uh, whereas cotton's better, wool takes it even to the next level. So being cool is really important uh, in terms of how well you sleep. You'll sleep a little bit better, slightly cooler. Exercise on a regular basis. A little exercise goes a long way. I don't sleep that well because our whole culture, we're not really working. Uh, the good book says the uh, rest of a laboring man is sweet. Work hard, working out, you're going to come home tired and you're going to sleep really good. A lot of times, the best sleep I had was on a vacation and met some mattress. Well, you were exercising, you swam all day, you did a whole bunch of stuff, went hiking, and then went to bed and walked through the whole city and you slept like a, like a log because of the exercise. Diet changes can change. Uh, big, big difference. No caffeine after two is what they say. Now, I don't fucking quite believe that, but uh, trying to cut down the caffeine after two o'clock. It takes uh, the half-life of, of caffeine in your body. It's supposed to be four hours, uh, so you know you want to make sure that you have a good eight hours before you're going to bed. Um, so that, that's how they come up with the two o'clock idea. Eating healthy. Turns out on the top of the list of foods that help you sleep, fish and especially salmon. So I happen to like salmon, so I throw the picture up there for you to entice you to eat right. Um, but there's a lot of foods. You can do some research on foods that can help uh, as the building blocks of melatonin and things like that and, and help you get a little bit better sleep. Sleep in the dark. I don't know who else has had this experience, but when you go to sleep, uh, you know, when you wake up, the light in your room can, if you want to sleep in until 8 or 9, which you maybe can't, if that room is pitch black, you might be able to, you'd be surprised at how much easier it is to, to do that. Uh, so blacking out the wall windows can help you get that more sleep in the morning if you need to. But sleep in the dark. Someone turns the lights on, goes to the bathroom, whatever, and it can wake you up. And of course, buy a mattress tailor fit for your perfect posture and comfort. Uh, posture and alignment have to do with two real key factors in sleep repair. Number one, posture facilitates the whole nervous system. So your chiropractor is going to say, hey, if you're like this or this, this can impair the, the bodily functions. Well, your body heals while you sleep. So if that alignment is not correct or it's not good, you might wind up with the same problems. So just remember that that facilitates that. Secondly, posture affects breathing. This flexion, this kind of in, uh, collapsing in of side sleepers can also be a great uh, problem in terms of deeper breathing. Deeper breathing while you're sleeping is really important. And that's it. Discover natural sleep at Design Sleep.
So if there's any questions, you feel free to let me know. Um, but essentially what we just went over was the idea of the different aspects of healing that happens both mentally, physically, and even emotionally while you sleep. Waking up to a new day, you kind of feel better. You can leave some baggage behind. You can feel more optimistic in the morning. Uh, so, even, so there's not just this physical aspect. Uh, in terms of trying to make sure that you get a better night's sleep, it's getting to bed on time, uh, avoiding the stress and the conflicts of life as best you can, keeping away from screens, and then sleeping in the dark, um, and eating and, and watching what you eat. But all these things are tips, and then of course what we do at Design Sleep is to focus on your um, ability to get a, a, a comfort and an alignment that helps facilitate much deeper sleep than your conventional bed. So all these things are facets. Hope you can sleep well, and forgive, and, and, and worry less, and be happy, and you will sleep just a little bit better. Thanks.